In today's video, we're taking a look at the Feelworld L4 multi-format 5-channel HDMI and SDI switcher. Let's get into it. Welcome to the channel, folks. My name's Shane. In today's video, I'm going to give you an overview of this very impressive new live switcher from the folks over at Feelworld. This is their new L4 video switcher. If you're unfamiliar with my channel, I've reviewed a number of different field world switches in the past, and they're usually a lot smaller than this. So they've really stepped things up in terms of functionality and usability with this particular unit. Now, what I'm gonna do also is leave some timestamps down in the description. Odds are this video will be quite long. So if you wanna skip ahead back or forth to a particular section, you can find all the timestamps down there in the description box. Just to let you know ahead of time, Fieldworld have provided this unit for this particular video review. I didn't buy it myself, so keep that in mind, but they've not given me any script. I don't get to preview this video ahead of time and no money's changed hands. So all thoughts about this will be my own. And being that I've had so much experience with different live switching solutions over the years, I think if you're a subscriber already, you'll get a kick out of this one. It really offers some really great features and it's very simplified over a lot of more complicated options. And that's one of the things I really like about it. So let's get into this video. First up, let's talk about everything that we get in the box. So included, we get a blue USB 3.0 cable, and this is designed to go out of the switcher directly into your computer. Included, we also get a power supply that has a detachable outlet option. So if you live in Australia, the US or Europe, you have the right connector already in the box. This is awesome. Usually when I get these units, they don't come with an Australian adapter. So big thumbs up there. Without question, the new standout feature of the Fieldworld L4 is the 10.1 inch touchscreen display and you can get a great sense of how it looks from the different camera angles. It's nice and bright, it's easy to see and I have no problems looking at it even sitting back like this. I can see exactly what's going on which is great. This large box on the top over here is our PST or preview window. And then we have our PGM or program. The program is what's going out to your audience and you can set everything up ahead of time using this preview window. Another thing that makes this switcher unique is we actually get five different input sources. So there's four HDMI inputs and one SDI input. We get three separate outputs on this unit as well. So the HDMI can either be set to program or preview. So the preview is this view with all of the stuff going on on screen. I'm looking at my reference monitor over here. So that's what that looks like. Of course, you can set it to the clean feed if you want. Now the SDI output is a clean feed only. So if you just wanna use SDI, you'll only be able to set that to clean feed. The third is the USB 3.0 output, which is going into my Mac over here and being recorded via Ecamm Live. So you're looking at that on screen. I think the colors and contrast all look very close and accurate to that of my actual camera. So yeah, you get three separate outputs and I think this makes it a really functional unit. The L4 is designed for streaming. So if you wanna to stream to any of the following platforms here, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Billaby, Zoom, WebEx, Twitch, or Yeelink, it will work but it also integrates perfectly with Ecamm Live, which I think is awesome. The computer will detect the L4 as a webcam, which means that any other service that I haven't mentioned, it will work directly to the computer. So you could absolutely stream and record over open broadcaster software, for example, or any other free software like that. If you've got a Mac, you can even use the photo booth and just record in there. So it's very functional when it comes to its usability. Now let's talk about input resolutions and what this can actually translate. So via the HDMI connectors, it can accept an input up to 4K at 30 frames per second. It will also do 1080p at 60 frames on both the SDI and HDMI, but you can't do 4K 30 on SDI. So it does cap out there. But just know this is a HD switcher only. So the output will only go up to 1080p at 60 frames per second, which is pretty much the standard for a lot of these consumer level switches. Now, if you're wondering what the image quality looks like between my camera recording and the switcher being recorded via Ecamm Live, this is how it compares. So you can get a good sense of whether or not you can see a huge difference between both of these images. One of the limitations with the Fieldworld L4 is that it can't record to an SSD externally. This is a dedicated live streaming switcher, but if you own your own encoder, for example, if you have something else that you can plug in as a HDMI capture device, then you can record without any problems. That said, if you've also got a computer and it can handle recording via OBS, it's a free way of being able to record, but it just requires a computer to do all of the encoding. There's no way just to record directly out of this unit. If this unit had recording capability to an external disc, this would have been pretty much perfect in my book, especially for doing live band recordings. It meant I didn't have to have a separate encoder, but as a desk option like this is still extremely functional. One of the things I can't find and I don't think is included in this at the time of filming, and if it is, I'll leave an annotation on screen because I've emailed Fuel World about this, but you can either 
Set up your preview windows here by tapping on the screen, or you can use these buttons here, and five isn't connected right now, that's the SDI. So as you see, nothing's changing in the program. So to change the program mode, I either have to push the cut button, and then it will change like this. So not the end of the world there, but it's just, just an extra button to be pushing, or I have to actually use this which I'm not a big fan of. I know a lot of people like using these because you can get a blend between two shots, but yeah, if you want a quick switch, I haven't found a way to actually make this operate in that particular way. So I hope this can be included in a firmware update down the track. I would love that, especially again, for sort of like band footage recording. It would make life a whole lot easier. Being able to quick switch just like that, like you also can on something like the A10 Mini. While there's no quick switch option, at least to my knowledge on this, this also does work a little bit differently to something like the A10 Mini. So it kind of makes sense in the grand scheme of things here, but if they could add a way to either tap on the screen and just have it switch on the program, that would be awesome. The switcher also has another really cool trick up a sleeve. So if you've got an iPhone or an Android phone or a Mac or PC, whatever, you can download the Feel World Live Plus app and you can have full wireless control over this, which I really love. So as soon as you get on the same network with your phone that the switch is plugged in to, it will just find it, which is unheard of. Usually with switches on a network, you've got to go through a bit of a convoluted process to get the app to interact with the software, but not this time, it just worked. It was the most seamless integration of app and switcher I've used so far. While the app won't give you the full menu system of this, it will allow you to switch wirelessly and it's almost lagged free. And I'll show you an example of that on screen with some B-roll. So yeah, the app works beautifully and I've got no complaints with it whatsoever. All right, up next, I'm gonna give you a rundown of how this all operates. And if you're wondering what this little tag is right here, this is a screen protector that came with the unit. You can take this off if you want, but I'm gonna leave it on, but I still think the visibility is fine and it just helps protect the screen. So let's get into it. I think one of the cool things about this is how the buttons relate to the menu system over here. So over here, we can change a lot of the different settings on the unit, but we can also quickly get into a few different options here. So if we wanna get into the main menu, we can hit this button or that one right there. We have a picture in picture button as well, which gives us two-stage access into this first main menu. So the main menu has main, picture-in-picture, picture, and Kia. Now, as you, you can see here, we've got main, picture-in-picture, picture, and Kia over here. Key is meaning green screen, chroma keying, and I'll show you that in just a moment. But this allows you to get into those options nice and fast, so you can set it up without having to menu dive. There's three other buttons along here which correspond to the audio options. So there's our audio tab here. You can push that button as well. There's a transition or a cut effects scene option here, and that's this button right here. Now this last button over here, this little info one, is all the information regarding the switcher. So you can see our IP address over here. DHCP is on by default, which is why my phone connected to it as easily as it did. We can turn the audio bars on or off globally if you wanna do that, which is cool. We can also turn on a histogram, which helps you set the exposure correctly. If you don't need it, you can turn it off. You can also factory reset it using this option. And you can also calibrate the T-bar, which is this here, the transition bar. And the two languages built into this is English and I think Chinese. Let's go through some of the features in each menu. So this first image icon over here allows us to change the brightness and contrast. And remember earlier when I said this switcher works a little bit differently. So anytime you change something, it doesn't instantly change. You see it in the PST option on the top left. And then as you use the T bar or you hit the cut button, it will then bring that into the program or main output of the unit. And I'll show you what I mean. So right now we can change the contrast and brightness. So I'll turn this up to 65 and we'll turn this one up to 65 as well. Now this might look a bit weird as I do this, but it's just to show you that this option now is brighter and has more contrast than this one. So as I bring this down, you can see now that the output is brighter and it has more contrast. And if I go back, this is how it looks prior to making any of the changes. And the cool thing is you can do a quick reset here. Everything goes back to stock. And then as I do this now, it's not going to change anything, which is great. You can also change the hue by using these three controls over here. I'm not gonna mess with this for the sake of the video. I don't see the point my camera is good, so it should hopefully look good on your end. Let's take a look at the main menu built into this unit. Now, the cool thing about this is you can either switch using the hardware keys and then hit cut nice and simple like this, or of course you can use 
the digital ones on screen, which is fantastic. So you can pick which one works best for you. I always prefer the hardware keys anytime I'm given the opportunity. They're much bigger as well, which makes it a little bit easier. Now, one of the cool things about this is we get picture in picture. Now, as you can see right now, it might not be set up ideally on the left-hand side. I'm gonna show you how to set this up. And we get two options here. The main one is the one that you want big in the shot. So I'm gonna use the video game footage for this. And then for the sub, I'm gonna use the image of me. So this is camera number one with the Super Nintendo Mini, Ghouls and Ghosts, one of my favorite games at all time. Now you can't hear the audio on the game. We'll get to that in just a moment, but I just wanted to show you how to set this up. Now the great thing about this is you can set the sub size. So if I wanna make this smaller, I can just use the minus button here. How cool is this? And then I can position it wherever I like using the up, down, left and right keys. I think this is so good. It's very easy to get this set up in a way that would work for gaming on Twitch or whatever. This is just really handy. So this whole interface here just makes a whole lot of sense. As I mentioned, we'll get to the audio setup in just a moment, but I also want to show you the king. But for this, I need to get my green screen. So let me get it. Let's take a look at the green screen or chroma keying effect built into this. Now, this was actually pretty easy to set up. A lot of these switches are really complicated, but I'll give you some tips. So when you get into the keying option from this menu option on the screen here, as you can see, you want your background to be the main camera. So the one that you're removing the background from. So this will be camera one because my green screen is right behind me. Camera four, I've got set up as the gameplay footage, which is coming up behind me. So the second row of options here is what's behind you. And the first row is the one that you want to actually take the green screen out of. And again, if I light this properly, it's going to look a lot better, but I can see looking at my reference recording over here that this actually looks pretty great straight out of the switcher with no other effect. So it, it works really well. And to get all of this to work, it's actually pretty simple. So I can pick a color that I want to remove right here. I've just got the green screen selected. If I hit on, the preview window already removes it. And then as I move this slider, it's going to bring that effect in. I can also hit the cut button over here as well, but you can preview this before you do anything to your audience, which I really like. When it comes to audio options, you can blend between two separate inputs, which is awesome. The audio quality through this is fine. I've got my Shure SM7B here connected to my XLR adapter on my Panasonic S5 Mark II, and it works great. But if you want to blend a second channel of audio, you can absolutely do that. So I've got a gaming sort of setup here ready to go. So this is Ghouls and Ghosts, and I can turn on that audio by hitting this button over here. Now, when I pull this down and bring it to my program, you're going to hear the gaming footage and my voice at the same time. There's two separate level controls, so I can adjust my voice by tapping up or down on this top volume option, or I can do the same thing on the second one, which is the gaming footage. So if I want to bring the gaming footage down and have my voice much louder, I can set it up that way or vice versa. This is really handy. You can, of course, lock this to any of the four HDMI inputs, the SDI input. You can have it audio follow video, which I never like to use, but if you've got multiple microphones set up and that happens to work for your setup, you can do that. But the great news is this would also be great for podcasting because you could run two cameras with two XLR adapters, two microphones, and have it switch between or have both microphones active all of the time, which is awesome. So this is much more powerful than the prior options without any question. Now there is a 3.5 millimeter audio input, which I think is designed for a mixer. I tried it with a shotgun microphone I've got that uses batteries. I was unable to get any sound out of it. I think it's designed for a mixer, but it didn't specify in the instructions that I got. So I can't test that right now. There's also options to send which audio you want to the headphones as well, which is pretty cool. So you can see those options on screen on the right hand side. Now, if you plan on buying this switcher for gaming, you can set this up and definitely make it work, but just know there's a latency involved. So what I would do is set up your console with a single input dual output HDMI splitter, run one end into a monitor that you're actually playing on and run the second output into this and then set it up and then you'll be in business. Just know if you're wearing headphones with this, it's slightly behind real time. So it gets really confusing. Same with gaming, it's just a little bit too laggy, but as a device for gaming or podcasting, this will work without any problems. Now let's talk about the transitions. For best results with this particular unit, tap on this A to B option here, the second one. It works nice and smoothly. So this is the standard fade transition. We've got all of these different options here and you can do them at different speeds thanks to the transition bar here. Welcome to the 1980s, everybody. 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, as you can see, or maybe it's like mid nineties. I shouldn't be eighties. Probably way worse. But yeah, these are like pretty sort of bog standard kind of transitions here. The fade looks good. Or of course you can just cut. I think the cut is the most efficient one. Again, I would have loved to have just been able to do this a little bit quicker here, but you know, just tap the cut button if you want a fast cut. Now I did notice a slight bug here if I'm using this option over here, which I'm not exactly sure what this cut method is supposed to entail. But if I hit one here and then bring this up, you'll see it glitch right at the last moment. Have another look. Hopefully it, well, hopefully it doesn't come up on the recording, but if it does, I'll let you know. I can see it on this program right now that it looks a little glitchy. Let's try it again. Actually, you know what? Yeah, it did it then. It did it then. So I would just select this second one and I haven't had any problems with it. So yeah, just a minor bug there, just passing that feedback back to Feel World. Lastly, let's talk about the settings option on screen. So earlier in the video, I mentioned that you can change the HDMI output to either the preview or PST window to the program, which is the clean feed. And you can do that via this menu on screen. It's currently set to PST as I'm recording all of that so you can get a good sense of what goes on with this unit. And it's easier for me to showcase things that I might be able to miss with the camera angles. Anyway, so PGM format is the program format output. So this will do 720p at 50 or 60 frames per second, 1080p at 25, 30, 50 or 60 frames per second. So whether you're doing a podcast or gaming, that really makes it easy. We can also turn a logo on and off just by using this option and you can import your own ones using the USB port on this side of the unit over here. So you can import your own that way. There's a little import option on screen if you wanna do that. And the cool thing is you can also move the logo around by using these keys here. So you can just simply push down and hold and it will move nice and fast. So that's really cool. All right, let's wrap this up. I'm gonna give you my first impressions on the L4 switcher from Feel World. Feel World have come so far from the original switcher that I showcased on the channel many years ago. And this is great. I mean, this touch screen is so good. It's nice and snappy. Everything's laid out in an intuitive way. Again, I just wish there was a quick way to switch between the program options just by tapping on screen. So you can just hit a button and it will switch for your audience. And again, this works in a different way to most switches, which is why they've done this. But yeah, the transition bar for me is not something that I would use. And there's no way to actually turn this off. So the menu, as simplistic as it is, actually emits a few things. So there's certain things you can't turn up, down, or on or off. And the transition bar is one of them. This also has active cooling. There's no way to turn the fan up, down, or turn it off, or set it to auto. It's just on, or it's set to its automatic mode. So that's cool. It will keep the unit cool, and it's, I had no issues with overheating or anything like that. And the fan is quiet enough that I don't think it'll be an issue. I mean. You can tell me if you can hear it. I can hear it in the room just, but it's not that loud whatsoever. It's definitely not as loud as the Pearl Nano over here, which is great. So no problems there whatsoever. But I think the benefit of this is its simplicity. Being able to blend two audio channels together thanks to the new audio controls is fantastic. That's great. Or you can set it up in the old school way of audio follows video and all that kind of thing as well if you need that. But I think this is a really powerful unit and the fact that the screen is as great as it is the only thing it's missing for me to make this perfect would be SSD recording directly out of the unit. So again, this is just designed for a computer system or for someone who doesn't want to have to, you know, do any type of recording directly out of this unit. But again, if you've got a separate recording solution or a computer handy, then you can record like that. And that's the majority of this video is being recorded on my Mac over here, which is old by the way. So it's still handling this without any problems. This is a really powerful unit. Let us know what you think about it. And a massive thanks to Feel World for sending this out. If you want to check it out, I'll link it down below. And yeah, I'm going to be doing my next live stream on this channel with this unit right here. So don't forget to subscribe and click the bell and I will catch you on the next video. See ya.